find him, please, Helen. I have a need. No, no. Please help me. It would mean so much. Vincent Pallotti was born in 1795, the son of a Roman grocer and his wife. Goodbye, Mama. Wait a minute, Vincent. Come back and get your lunch. And be sure to eat all of this. You look so thin. Everyone will think I'm starving my own son. <laughs> Don't worry about me, Mama. I'm fine. And come right home after school. During his childhood, Rome was occupied by French soldiers under Napoleon. The churches were suppressed, and the streets were filled with the jobless, the poor, and the starving. Please, can you spare me a crust of bread for the love of God? I haven't eaten for a week. Something, anything at all. Father Fazzini, please excuse me for disturbing you, but may I speak with you for a moment? It's very important. Certainly, Maria. Please sit down. It's about my son, Vincent. What seems to be the problem? Well, he's a very good boy. As his spiritual father, you know that. But there are things that are beginning to worry me. What kind of things? Just this morning, I saw him giving his lunch to a beggar woman on the street. He kept nothing for himself. Last week he came home wet and cold because he had given his coat and shoes away. Oh, I do believe in giving to the poor father, but he gives no thought to himself. He's not a well child either. Sometimes late at night, I look into his room, and instead of sleeping, he's kneeling on the floor before the Madonna. Between this and his fasting, Maria. I... The finger of God is here. But this is not normal for a child his age. Perhaps not for other children. But Vincent is a special boy. He's preparing for his life's work. You're saying he wants to become a priest? Yes. I understand now. And so be it, Father. Vincent Pallotti continued his service to the poor and was ordained a priest in 1818. After distinguishing himself as a theological scholar, he was offered a job as a seminary professor. Here he began laying the groundwork that would later enable him to spread his work throughout the world. Of course. The most important reference to it is, as I'm sure you're all aware from your various readings, God gave the commandment of love. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. God's son gave the same commandment to his disciples. As the father sent me, so I send you. Yes. Do you feel that it's necessary for a man to be a priest before he can do this kind of work? Not necessarily. Anyone who practices the deeds of love towards his neighbor as well as to himself is actually an apostle. Then it's meant to be taken in a much more universal sense. Exactly. And by neighbor, our Lord did not mean just those we see on the streets of Rome. He meant people in all corners of the world, everywhere. 
I think that's enough for one day. We'll take this up again tomorrow. Professor Palotti, do you have some free time right now? I'd like to talk to you about your lecture today. You are? Melio, Raphael Melio. <laughs> of course, Raphael. I have a call to make, but I can spare a few minutes. And please, call me Vincent. Let's sit down. I just wanted to tell you that what you were saying today was very interesting to me. Because you see, I've been thinking very seriously of becoming a missionary. Is that so? Yes, it is something that seems right for me. I think I would be good at it. I have no doubt you would. But may I just suggest another possibility? By all means. Are you familiar with the College for the Propagation of the Faith? Of course, that's here in Rome. Then you know that they have students from practically every country there. Yes, but I really don't see how that applies to me. It is possible that you could become a far more effective missionary by staying right here and teaching those men to carry the Holy Word to their own countries. Your ideas could travel through them. I must admit, that thought never occurred to me. Think about it now. I'd be very interested to hear what you decide. I'll be sure to let you know. Oh, and thank you for talking to me, Professor Pilate. Vincent. Vincent. Father, I was in such a hurry, I didn't see you. Are you all right? <laughs> yes, I'm fine. You sent for me? No, I don't think so. I don't even know who you are. I am Father Vincent Palotti, and I came to tell you that your daughter is healed. Healed? What do you know about my daughter? You say she's healed. I happen to know she's not healed at all. In fact, she's dying. That's where I was going to get our priest. There's no need of that. God has reached into your house and healed your daughter. Go and be with her. This is a day of joy. Giacomo, come quickly. Wait right here, Father. Giacomo, her fever is completely gone and her eyes are open. It happened just now. Mama, could I have some water? Of course, dear. The priest. Father Palotti! Father Palotti, wait! Father! Father! Oh, my daughter, Camila, her fever's gone. She's normal. She... I know. It is hard to understand. But she hadn't opened her eyes or spoken for days. Now... Just accept and believe it. And give thanks to God. Yes, of course, but I must also thank you. Here. Take this. For your work. Give it to the poor. As an offering to God. But at least do us the honor of having dinner with us soon. We can talk. There must be something I can do to help you. I will come with pleasure, my friend. And it's possible that there is something you can do for me. You only have to name it, Father. In 1834, Vincent Pallotti was offered the rectorship of the Church of the Holy Spirit in Rome. It was here that he began to organize the Society of the Catholic Apostolate around his many activities. It also marked the beginning of a new period of challenge, as well as personal attack. Yeah. Uh, your glass is empty. Uh, no, yeah. Have another good. little drop. And it's a mistake not to have red wine, but you can. I imagine you can finish another glass. Salami, too, too. Of course. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> I imagine you'd like some salami. Oh. You will. Won't mind if I have a glass. No. Mm -hmm. That's a good life. I wonder how this chicken is. It's a little tough. What's uh, wrong with a cook today? Yes. Uh, Father Pallotti, we didn't expect you to tomorrow. Uh, come in, come in. I was eager to see the church and get started, so I came down early. Oh, yes, of course. But would you care for some cheese or perhaps some wine? It's from Tuscany. I have a friend who has a vineyard. <laughs> Thank you, no. I have already eaten. Yeah. Well, uh, <clears throat> let me introduce myself. I'm Don Giovanni de Mura. This is my colleague, the Father Paolo. Very pleased to meet you. We've heard so much about you and your work. Oh, it's a great honor to have you here with us. <laughs> Thank you. Tell me something. Why is the church closed? Oh, we only keep it open a few hours a day now, the neighborhood being what it is. You understand. All the more reason to keep God's house open. Of course. But uh, there's the priest to consider. And I'm keeping the sanctuary clean is a full-time job. Uh, these people, they bring in enough filth in two hours to turn it into a barn. Then it seems to me that our first task here is to turn the barn back into a church. If it's no trouble, would it be possible to see the inside now? Oh, certainly, Father. Uh, just let me try and find the keys. What do you think you're doing there? Get away from there. The church is closed. I'm sorry, Father. I... I just come for a confession. Obviously, it's not possible today. Can't you see? The church is closed. You see what I mean about these people, Father? What can I do for you, Senor? I only want to pray to Our Lady and... and wait for confession. I am Father Pelotti, the new rector here. And I would be happy to hear your confession now. Oh, Father, I... Don Giovanni, I would appreciate it if you would open the church now and post a notice that I am available for confession every day. Yes, Father. Right away. What is your name, Signor? Elisabetta San. I come from Sardinia. And your family? Since I was a child, I am ugly by the smallpox. I never wanted husband or children. Only serving God. So, you are alone now? Yes. When I'm 19 years, my parents make me to marry. Oh, a good man. He's since gone to heaven. I have five children, but they are in Sardinia. I make a pilgrimage to the Holy Lands, but our ship is wrecked. I, I have not the right papers, so I stay in Rome. I have no money and no family. Now, I only want to serve God, only serving Him. And so you shall. You will have a new family, a family of apostles, serving God together. But I, I cannot read or write. What? Tell me what you can do. I beg, still some, and pray. And do those things for him as his apostle. I cannot be apostle. That is for priests like you. It means any person serving God. Elisabetta, I have a vision. It's a vision of all lay people, people like yourself, doing the work of priests together. And I could really use your help in this. Father Palotti, it is an honor to help you. Anything I will do for you, just to ask. Yes, Father. 
Good afternoon. What are you all doing standing here outside? Go inside the church. It's much cooler. Church is locked, Father. Locked? There must be some mistake. It should be open now, according to the new hours. Don Giovanni or Father Paolo did not come this morning to open up? No. No one comes. It is closed all day. How can you tolerate this? If I were you, I would get rid of those priests. Obviously, they're determined to work against you. The struggle to replace them would be long and costly. I can't afford to waste any time on it. Then at least find another church where you can work in peace. What would happen to these people? I came here to serve them. I don't think that abandoning them is the best way to go about it. They deserve better than they've received in the past. Raphael, we need these people for God's work. Otherwise, all we're left with is an empty building. Enough of this talk of problems. Tell me about your teaching. Are you still enjoying it? Very much. I like all my students. But I would have to say the ones that come from England are my favorites. Their manner fascinates me. So, you're still attracted to exotic people in foreign lands, huh? Yes. I still hope to go overseas someday. I hope it doesn't happen too soon. Why do you say that? Raphael, I have an idea. And I need your help. For what? I want to form a society, one that would accept everyone to do the work of priests. A society for everyone? Mm-hmm. A society that would welcome lay members from all social ranks and age groups to work alongside both the regular and secular clergy. To do what? To spread the faith together, to rekindle the concept of charity. I believe that each person has a responsibility towards the welfare of his neighbor as himself. It's a great idea, and one that is needed, of course, but such a huge new work. Oh, not new. One that revives the fundamental teachings of the church, but using modern methods, an unselfish spirit, and true humility. But how, specifically? I see it being led by a body of priests living a community life. We could start right here, at this church. Here, at this church? Why not? First of all, we'd bring in all those priests who were faithful to our ideas to live here. They'd be the ones to constitute the membership, along with the sisters and all the lay members. It would be like full citizenship for the laity. Are you serious? I have never been more serious. But what about the approval of the official church, not to mention the question of money? I have a strong feeling it will all be provided. An excellent dinner, Giacomo. My compliments, Signora. I'm so glad you liked it. Perhaps you would care for some coffee now, Father. Oh, that would be lovely, thank you. Camilla? Yes, Mama. And now, down to business. <laughs> I see you're a man who doesn't like to waste time. So what can I do for you, Father? Well, I need 500 scudi to send to one of our missions in Arabia. 500 scudi? Well, that's a lot of money. It would take me several months to raise a sum as large as that. Unfortunately, we don't have that much time. I really need it by next week. Next week? Well, I'm afraid that's impossible. Giacomo, don't be afraid to ask people for help. But, Father Palotto, you must remember I'm a businessman. I'm accustomed to earning money, not begging for it. You'll know the right people to go to. But I'm not used to that sort of thing. It's outside my experience. Thank you, my dear. Have you already forgotten your promise to help with God's work? No, no, of course not. But at least give me a note saying that the collection is being made in the name of Vincent Palotti. You're known and respected now. That won't be necessary. Just ask for it in the name of Jesus Christ, and it will be given you.
I can't do it. I'm sorry. I don't care what he says. That man is a saint. Giacomo, look what he did for Camilla. You must at least try. But it's so embarrassing, a man in my position begging for money. Stop fretting and get into bed. Tomorrow it will seem easier. You'll see. Maybe I could go to him in a few days, tell him I tried, but that they all refused. Do you really think he would believe that? Do you? No. Then you must go out and do it. Good night, my dear. Five hundred scooty. I think you'll find that most of the ideas we discussed are included. Naturally, there's still a lot more work to be done on it. I know, but even so, it's very well laid out and certain to meet with everyone's approval. The title I'm proposing in this petition is simply The Catholic Apostolate. And I mean Catholic in its universal sense. I like it. Simple, and it includes the laity, which is the key to the whole idea. You think you can find some time later on to work? Of course. Oh, oh there you are. I've been looking everywhere for you. You won't believe it. What is it, man? Are you all right? I can't believe it. In only two hours. I've never seen anything like it. What happened? They didn't even question it. They just gave 500 scooty, exactly what you asked me for. It's unbelievable. I can't tell you how much I appreciate this, my friend. It's a great deed you've done, and I can assure you the money will be put to good use. There are so many needs. In fact, I think I'm going to require your services again very soon. Soon? Surely this will last a while. Well, it's just the beginning. It has proven to me that I can count on you. So now I need you to begin raising money in earnest for the foundation of our apostolate. Oh, no, Father, please. Giacomo, it's not for me. This is God's work we're doing. He is asking you for it. Well, Father, when you put it like that, you know I can't refuse. And besides, it's obvious that you have a way with people. Where would we ever find anyone as capable and talented as you? Well, maybe next time you'll only want 300, Scoody. <laughs> <laughs> Not long after its foundation, Vincent's young society of priests, brothers, and laity was faced with a new challenge. A deadly cholera epidemic swept down on Rome from the north. As part of Vincent's program of aid, he conceived the idea of food stamps for the destitute. Zaria is closed. Quarantine. I am a priest. Someone must care for the dying. You go in there and you'll be one of the dimes. I'm sorry. That is a chance I'll have to take. Even our Pope is working in the hospitals. I can do no less. Paul, you won't be much help to anyone when they throw your body on the burial cart.
Is there anything you can do for her father? I'm sorry, Signora. Her physical life is out of my hands. But I can make sure that her spiritual life will be peaceful and happy. Peristam Santa Mozia. It is bad. Yes. I feel so helpless sometimes. You've been a great comfort to these people, Vincent. Probably more than you realize. I wish there were more I could do. Excuse me. Are you all right? Where's your mother and father? I don't know. They were, they were taken away by the men. And the rest of your family? They made us leave our house. Have you eaten today? I don't, I don't think so. And yesterday? I don't remember. Here. Take these to the market. You can use them to buy bread, meat, and fruit. And if you need more, you leave a note for us at the church. Here. This is a new blanket. Uh, the one you're wearing should be burnt. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. You've been so kind. And tomorrow morning, come by the church. We'll find you a place to stay. Thank you. Five thousand dead means there are going to be hundreds of orphans. So must do something, especially for those girls. Vincent, are you all right? Yes, yes, I just tripped on something. No, you didn't. You're exhausted. We're going back right now. We've done enough for one night. No, no, no. I'm fine, really. There's still too much work to be done. I want to go by the church and see that it's still open. The epidemic finally ran its grim course and disappeared two months later. To mark the growing success of his society of the Catholic apostolate, Vincent organized the celebration of the Octave of the Epiphany. This was a symbolic announcement that the apostolate was to be for the entire church in all lands. During the mass, the homily was given in the mother tongues of the different nations. Very impressive. Father Palotti's apostolate is becoming quite successful. Especially in recruiting people for their work. They seem to be getting quite powerful. I hear there's even talk of a mission college of their own. Is that a fact? Then it's time to move. If we don't, they will take over the entire work of our society for the propagation of the faith. That remains to be seen. We're not powerless yet. Unfortunately, Pope Gregory approves of their society, so there's not much we can do. Isn't there? Really? On what grounds? Well, for a start, the title, such a pretentious title as the Catholic Apostolate, has already raised a few eyebrows in the Vatican. So I have heard. And let us raise those same eyebrows a little higher. No matter how honest or sincere a man is, his reputation is a fragile thing in the hands of well-placed rumors. He's a good man. I'm sorry to have to cross swords with him, but we simply cannot 
afford to allow him to put us out of business, can we? Absolutely not. seems that our little campaign has finally paid off. As of today, the Society for the Catholic Apostolate ceases to exist as an autonomous organization. Their works will now fall under our auspices. Excellent. This is exactly what we needed. And with the official approval of Pope Gregory. It took a lot of work to get that signature. I hope it was worth it. Of course it was. Now we're free to act as before without any interference. I think this calls for a little celebration, shall we? Certainly. To the propagation of the faith. The propagation of the faith. The year 1838 has seen a strong broadening of the base of our society. Our work in prisons has been expanded. The evening schools for apprentices continue to flourish with 500 young people enrolled. We recently acquired the Collegio Fuccioli for use as an orphanage for girls left homeless by the cholera epidemic. Arrangements for its opening celebration are being made and... Uh... Giovanni. Is Monsignor Cadolini. He says he bears a letter for you in the name of the Holy Father. Well, please, show him in. Father Palotti? Yes. Welcome, Monsignor. It's a pleasure to see you. Please, sit down. Thank you, but I cannot stay. I came here simply to deliver a document, one that you may find interesting. Thank you. What is it, Vincent? Please, read it to the others. Although His Holiness the Pope strongly commends the zeal of the new society under the name of the Catholic Apostolate, he can approve neither this title nor this foundation as structured since it is completely purposeless and unnecessary on account of... What is the meaning of this? It is a papal order for the dissolution of this society. Your works will be administered under the already existing Society for the Propagation of the Faith. This cannot be. It's a conspiracy. Raphael. Monsignor, you will forgive us if we continue with our meeting? <clears throat> Certainly. I'm sure you all have many things to discuss. Please, don't get up. I know the way out. Please continue, Giacomo. I'm sorry for the disruption. Okay. <clears throat> After a mass in the church, we shall proceed with the girls to the new home which will be called the welfare home of St. Agatha. We, we thank God for this and all his other blessings upon our work this year. Obviously the work of jealous enemies. I'd just like to know what they told the Pope to make him change his mind. I just don't understand it. The Vatican approved our foundations. Vincent, it's not fair. This is your life's work. I know. But remember one thing, Raphael. 
It was necessary for a crucifixion before there could be a resurrection. What do you mean by that? Perhaps this is a lesson to us, to teach us humility and perspective. Then you just accept this? No, I do not. I believe our ideas are worth fighting for. Tomorrow we begin preparing our case. And when it's ready, I'll take it to the Vatican myself. Raphael, I want you to call another meeting of the members. Tell them that we need their help in compiling a portfolio of documents that support our cause. We have to move quickly. <laughs> With your holiness's approval, I would like to submit this memorandum I've prepared, which details certain information you may not be aware of. This, I presume, concerns your Catholic apostolate. Yes. I believe it will clarify certain misunderstandings that have arisen about our work. The objection we have heard is that by taking the name Catholic Apostolate, you are claiming the entire apostolate of Christ's church. There was no such intention, Your Holiness. Just as St. Ignatius had no intention of claiming the entire person of our Lord in founding the Society of Jesus. Yes, this is indeed true. Our society venerates its special mission and its own unique works. They are all listed there. And they are efforts not being duplicated by any other existing society, to my knowledge. Very interesting. I must tell you, I was given a completely different impression of your society. This information changes things. I think you've been spoken of falsely. This is an admirable work, Father. In truth, Your Holiness, I am not worthy of praise. This is Christ's work. I am merely his servant. Then go as his servant and continue your work with my blessing. And may your society always prosper. The work of the society continued. With a total commitment of time and energy, Vincent immersed himself in his projects and organized chaplaincy to the military. Time to hear the confessions of the many who sought him out, from the poor and needy, to the rich and the cardinals, even the Pope. The establishment of a congregation of sisters of the Catholic Apostolate. writing and rewriting of apostolic plans and projects. And of course, throughout his life, continued service to the poor and the needy. Vincent also served those who were spiritually hungry. At the dedication mass for the charity home of St. Agatha, Vincent's overworked body finally gave out on him.
clear mountain air of the Camaldolese Monastery in the hills outside Rome, Vincent recuperated and plunged into a different kind of work, a work of prayer, meditation, and writing. His writings indicate that this three-month period was one of intense spirituality, where he strove for a mystical union with the Holy Trinity. The more intense his union with God, the more he showed his personal warmth for everyone. You wanted to see me? Yes, my father says that you come from Rome, that you're a saint. Saint? No, I don't think so. Anything but. You're not Father Pallotti? Yes. But I think I'm as much a saint as you are. Not me. I'm too young. <laughs> no, you're not. I think you'd make a very good saint. How? Well, just loving people. All people. Even those who are hard to love. Like my sister? Yeah. Like your sister. Oh, is that how you do it? For what? Become a saint? Well, let's just say that that's how I've decided to spend my life. See that? I made it when I was ten. All by yourself? Yes. Well, my father helped me a little. You can try it if you want. Hmm. Do you think it would hold me? Of course it will. I made it very strong. If you swing high enough, you can touch the other tree. But don't worry if you can't do it. It's pretty difficult. I'm glad you have such faith in me. What's your name? Giuseppe. Well, St. Giuseppe, perhaps another time. In the meantime, do you think you could find us something hot to drink? Okay, come on. Soon after his return to Rome, Vincent's society was granted the little church of San Salvatore for use as a base of operations. This will be good for the mission activities. Lots of room for the storage of the printed materials. I think I'll make that my office. It's close to the chapel. Oh, here, let me take that. It's so good to have a place of our own where no one can bother us. God has certainly been good to us. Raphael, you look like a man with something on his mind. You know me too well, Vincent. So, what is the cloud that is casting a dark shadow on such a happy day? There's something I have to discuss with you. I can't put it off any longer. By all means. What is it? You remember when I was a student? Of course. Not the best, but not the worst either. And I mentioned my desire to go overseas as a missionary? Several times, I remember. I still desire it, and an opportunity has arisen. But what about your work here? I need you. And we're really starting to gain momentum now. I know, believe me, this has not been an easy decision. But there's a large community of Italians living in London, and the pastor who's been serving them is resigning his post, and I wish to apply for it. I see. London. Yes. Vincent, there's a great need in England now. Our people there are a poor, suppressed minority who are constantly coming under attack because of their religion. Yes, I'm aware of the situation. I sent some money to Cardinal Wiseman to help establish a seminary to train more priests. Exactly. And I want to go there and incorporate some of your ideas by teaching the lay people to get involved also. 
It's a great opportunity to extend our work. If it's God's will, you must obey. I know. But it does not make it any easier. If I bring you the application, will you write me a recommendation? Of course. Thank you, Vincent. Well, I guess I'd better go. There's a lot to be done. Raphael, I'm gonna miss you. I'm missing too. You have been a brother in God's work. And I hope you remain that way. The latter years of Vincent's life were clouded by the revolution that had been threatening Rome for many years. Using violent means, rebels sought an end to the Vatican's direct rule of the central Italian states. Hatred of the church was so great that some priests lost their lives. However, Vincent fortunately escaped injury. Excuse me, Father. Yes? What can I do for you? I need some help. Actually, advice. It's something of a personal nature. Yeah, I see. Please, sit down. Father, it's like this. I have raised a son who wants to destroy the church. How is that? He's one of those rebels who's fighting to tear down the Vatican and everything it stands for. He says he'll kill any priest he sees. Have you tried to talk to him? Many times, Father, but he refuses to listen. He just lies at home, cursing day and night. You see, he was seriously wounded fighting up in the north. They sent him back home to die, but I'm afraid he's going to die full of bitterness. Then I will come and see him. But no, you cannot. That's the problem. He vows he'll kill any priest he sees. And he always keeps his guns beside the bed. Nevertheless, I think it's important that I see this son of yours tonight. Why don't we go? All right, Father. Time, I pray you don't go inside. If he recognizes you, he'll kill you. Then he must not recognize me. Just a moment. Good evening, Signora. I am Father Palotti. I was wondering if I could borrow your shawl. I promise to return it by tomorrow morning. Thank you, Signora. Let's go in.
Who is it? Relax, Mario. It's just a friend who's come to help you. Oh, please, lie back down. There's nothing to be alarmed about. Go on to bed. I'll watch over. Who are you? What are you doing here? It's all right, Mario. I didn't come here to hurt you. My name is Father Palotti. <coughs> that priest. If I had not dead when you walked in here last night, I would have killed you. Now you know. Do you still want to kill me? And when did you help me? Because you needed it. You have serious wounds. Did you hope to cure me with this? In a way. It's much harder for the body to heal itself when the heart is full of violence and anger. I brought this to you as a symbol of peace. Why don't you just lie back down now and try to get some more rest? I'll be right here if you need me. Vincent society survived the turmoil of the revolution and continued to attract more and more people to assist his good friend Giacomo Salvati in the work of the Catholic apostolate. In 1849, Vincent seemed to sense that his earthly life was ending. And, uh, you know, my dear, I really think we shall have to return to Rome. Did you enjoy your walk, Father? It was lovely. Thank you. Good. I'm so glad. It was a beautiful baptism, Father. Thank you. A very special privilege for me, my dear. And I'm honored that you chose to name him Vincent. <laughs> With a name like that, he's certain to become a priest. Oh, please, Giacomo, let him enjoy his freedom for a little while longer. <laughs> By the way, I have a little gift for you. For what you did for us today, and for what you've done for us throughout the years. That was not necessary, oh. but I thank you. And as it happens, I have a little gift for you, too. Thank you. So, shall we see what lies beneath these fancy wrappings? Let's. It 
appears that our thinking has grown too similar over the years, my friend. <laughs> well, I shall treasure it always. To tell you the truth, when I bought it, I was sorry I couldn't keep it. <laughs> the Lord works in mysterious ways, Giacomo. <laughs> shall we stretch our legs? It's good to see you looking so relaxed. Country life seems to agree with you. Yes. I feel this is a, a resting place before my final journey. Soon? Perhaps. I am ready. And you? In God's good time. There is still so much to be done. It's a comforting thought to know that the work will Two weeks ago, I had a letter from Raphael. He says that wonderful things are happening in England. I'm very glad to hear it. And so, God's work goes on. In spite of us. In spite of us. <laughs>